insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 124, Teens and Entitlement. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my grateful and cheerful co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? You can be honest. It's okay. That's what this show's for. Not so well. Not so well, huh? Anything we want to address here or no? Uh. Probably just burnt out from band and school and stuff. It's tough uh, first full week at school. Yeah, we might talk about it at. We might talk about it later on the podcast. Maybe next week. Not sure. Sounds like we got a good podcast coming up then. <laughs> really. But this week we are talking about entitlement. This was one that you had done the research for. Um. We'll talk about what the mentality of entitlement and its clinical definition are. We'll explore how entitlement mentality affects relationships, and then we'll take a look at signs of an entitled teenager and methods to fix entitled behavior before we wrap up with three tools for battling entitlement. But before we do that, though, I do want to invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, We did resolve the issues we had with our uh, video Hosting So all of our video podcasts are now up and running on Podbean. Uh, Big thanks to them for that. Uh, They made it very easy to migrate over. So if you do want video versions of our podcast, you can find us listed as Insights into Things. Audio versions of this podcast can be listed and found as Insights into Teens. And they are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and pretty much any place you can get a podcast these days. I would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback. Uh, We're always looking for show suggestions. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things, or on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast, or on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things, or links to all those on our website at insightsintothings.com. Are you ready? Sure. All right. So what is the mentality of entitlement? So the research for this comes from webmd.com, and it was conducted by you, Madison. They say that entitlement mentality is defined as a sense of deservingness, or being owed a favor when little or nothing has been done to deserve special treatment. It can be known as the, quote, you owe me attitude. Clinically speaking, entitlement is a narcissistic personality trait. People with narcissistic personality disorder have an inflated idea of themselves and a need for lots of attention from other people. It's not known exactly how this mentality develops, but a sense of entitlement may be due to social factors including the environment you grew up in, the way your parents treated you, whether adults solved your problems for you or not, or how you're treated by authority figures. So, how now I want to kind of mention how entitlement mentality can affect your can affect your relationships. People with with an entitlement mentality often see themselves as superior to others. As a result, this way of thinking affects interpersonal relationships. There can be long-term relationship damage as a result of entitlement mentality. 
When you believe you're entitled to better treatment than others, or that the rules don't apply to you, you're more likely to suffer in the long term. Given that you simply believe you aren't getting what you're owed, an entitlement mentality can result in conflict in relationships, unhappiness, disappointment, and depression. Your career may suffer too. Entitled people often interview well and can land leadership roles because of their confidence. However, they often lack team spirit and avoid problem solving in the workplace. Most of the decisions an entitled person makes are self-serving. This can quickly become apparent to their coworkers. There's also the cycle of entitlement that we should talk about. So feeling entitled to something and the disappointment that follows when you don't get what you want can reinforce entitled behavior. This typically follows a vicious three-step cycle. When you're entitled, you're always vulnerable to the threat of unmet expectations. When your expectations are unmet, it can lead to dissatisfaction and other emotions like anger and a sense of being cheated. When you're distressed, you try to fix the situation and console yourself. This results in self-assurance that you deserve everything you've ever wanted, which reinforces the same entitled behavior. So it's it's kind of a cycle that feeds itself when you get into that rut there. Yep. So let me start off by asking, do you think you suffer from an entitlement mentality? I mean, I don't really think I do. I never really feel like I'm ever always owed something. I know that, like, for the most part, um, I never feel like I'm owed anything, even if I do um, something for someone else. Um, I guess only if the expectation I have of that person is to be, is to have them kind of owe me in a way, then that's really the only time I think of that. But most of the time, I feel like I mostly owe people for the most part. Like, even if it's really not, um, that big of a deal. Um, and I would tend to agree for the most part. And I, not to pat myself and and mommy on the back, but I think a lot of that comes with the fact that even though I don't want you to want for anything, what mommy and I have done was we've tried, you know, since the time that you were a baby, we've tried to teach you that in order to get the things that you want, they have to be earned. Either they're earned by good behavior They're earned by obeying the rules. They're earned by doing your chores, whatever it is. And through the years, you've willingly accepted that. And when things are given to you, you're very appreciative because you yourself have had the opportunity to work and earn money. And you understand what the value of that effort actually is. Do you think that has helped you to not have an an entitlement attitude? Oh, definitely. Um, I think a lot of people who are entitled don't understand the value of hard work. When you think about kids who constantly want everything and their parents just willingly go along with it, they don't know the amount, they don't really take value in how it, on how they would get what they wanted. It's just that they got it, and that's all they really care about. They don't care, like, how much money their parents spend, how much time it took them to get this, like, how much effort that went into giving them this, something that they demanded, and they just, all they care about is that they got it, and sometimes they just completely throw it away or just completely trash their parents because... It was like a different model or something. Right. You know, and it's funny. And in my experience, I find that the people that tend to be those who are the most entitled are the ones that haven't had to work to get to where they are. A couple of people that I've worked for in the past come to mind where their parents were very industrious. They were the ones that started out with nothing, worked their way to the top, became very successful at what they did. And then their children benefited from that, but there was never a need for their children to actually, <coughs> excuse me, there was never a need for the children to actually put that effort in themselves. 
they've always been entitled in, in my experience. Do you know anybody? Have you experienced anyone who's entitled that you are aware of? Um, I can't say that any specific um, person comes to mind. Um, I've tried to probably avoid those kinds of people, especially because you never really want to be someone around someone who's completely entitled and only thinks of themselves and no one else. Right. Um, the only example I can really think of is a little, might be controversial in a way. Okay. And that's people who really don't wear masks. That's a fair point. Some of those people might be considered to be entitled in a way. I could certainly, I could certainly see where you're going with that. And that kind of makes sense. Um, a lot of times entitlement can also be about not largely not appreciating what you have. Like those people, you know, let's talk about the mask wearers. You know, the mask wearers are people who understand that there are sacrifices that you have to make for the greater good. You know, when I wear a mask, I don't wear a mask just to protect myself. I wear a mask to protect all those around me too to protect my family, to protect my coworkers. And those who don't wear a mask, most of the ones, at least that I've encountered, tend to look at it as, well, I don't need to wear a mask. I'm going to get it no matter what, and I'll just have a natural immunity. And I think that's kind of an entitled opinion because, yeah, okay, you may be young, you may be healthy, you may be in good shape and not have any underlying conditions, but you're not the only one at risk. You could very well get it, get a mild case of it, but become a carrier and then spread that to others. Mm -hmm. And this entitlement mentality is all about me. You know, what can I do for me? What's important to me? What's valuable to me? And people that are the anti-maskers are all about themselves. You know, they'll throw out different you know, freedoms and stuff like that. But really it's about them and wearing a mask is really about protecting others. And so I agree with you. I think, I think you're probably on par with that. Um, so you've never had a situation where you've had to deal with an entitled mentality or anything like that. No, thank goodness. Well, I had this one boss uh, a few years back and we used to have a saying, and we, we said, uh, you know, his father put him on third as a baseball reference. His father put him on third and he convinced himself that he hit a triple. And he just assumed that because he rode his father's coattails to financial success, that he himself was financially successful and competent and intelligent. And when his father kind of got done dealing with all that nonsense and let him go run off on his own and run his own company, he ran it into the ground and proved that he couldn't manage his way out of a wet paper bag. And he still thought that he was entitled even after all that. And, and once his father cut him off, he kind of had to fend for himself. And I think he started to get an appreciation at that point in time for how tough business was and how tough it was to make it on your own. So, so even people that are, that are uber entitled, you know, and we're talking somebody who, you know, was millions of dollars, you know, in his bank account it, in one instance, owned a company, owned a multi-million dollar home, owned a yacht, owned all this different stuff, went from that to basically nothing. And he's, you know, owing money to the IRS and stuff like that. Even people that are that entitled can come around and start to get an appreciation and, and work through that entitlement. So let's take a little break and we're going to come back and look at what some of the signs are in teenagers that are entitled. And we'll start looking at how we can deal with this entitlement mentality. We'll be right back. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild 
the online game Star Wars The Old Republic, with hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about teens and entitlement. And now we're going to be talking about what are the signs of an entitled teenager. And this research comes from finallyfamilyhomes.org. And it says an entitled teenager is confused about what's deserved, what's earned, and what's a gift. They're unwilling to help others or accept personal responsibility for themselves. Entitled teens have high demands for everyone but themselves. Entitlement is a feeling your child may have, but it's very unlikely for them to express it directly. Therefore, it's up to you to determine if your teen has a sense of entitlement. Here are five signs that may indicate you have an entitled child. So the first sign we have is they can't handle being told no. They melt down, pout, or put up a battle every time you turn down a request. An immediate yes is the only way to avoid a battle. They also show no signs of sincere gratitude. Again, something that we don't have with you, fortunately. Why should they be grateful for what they believe they're owed? You're lucky to usually hear a forced thanks from them when you give them something. An ungrateful teen is a sign of an entitled teen. They may also have a long list of never-ending demands. If you don't expect to walk through a store without being barraged with demands or n for nearly everything you walk by, you probably have an entitled teenager. They also have a no-can-do attitude. Make their own sandwich or lunch for themselves, pick up their laundry or trash on their floor, that's too much to ask for them. Another behavior that can be Another behavior can be that they're constantly comparing. It always seems to be not fair for them. They're not afraid to ask for the best and the first. If three or more of these sound like your child, you're probably dealing with an entitled teenager. Being entitled will not serve them or you well. So it's important to help your child grow out of this attitude. So now we can look at how to fix entitled behavior. The first step towards successfully fighting entitlement is looking into what may be driving the behavior. Usually there is some misinformation or false beliefs driving their feelings that are feeding the entitled attitudes and behaviors. In addition, the teenagers are developmentally inclined to be more wrapped up in themselves. As far as false beliefs go, it could be that they have bought into the message that their value is based on what they own or how they look. If your sense of personal wealth or your personal worth is on the line, non-essentials can start to look very essential. Those $100 jeans aren't just expensive, Getting them becomes tied to how loved and lovable you believe you are. Feeling equipped or unable to get what you want or need can drive entitled behavior. If you think that the only way you can get those genes is to demand them, that's what you're going to do. Developmentally, the science shows that teenage brains begin to revolve more intensely around self as they begin preparing for independence. Consequently, Teens need extra help during this time to think about others and to empathize. Chances are that they're not thinking about how much work or money someone else spent to give them something, which is something that, that we had already kind of addressed uh, in the previous segment there. So let me ask you, do you tie your self-worth to any kind of personal or materialistic possessions? 
Not really. I normally try tying my self-worth more or less to my good-hearted nature or some of or my intelligence or some of my hobbies and stuff like that. More or less the things I feel that actually make up who I am rather than material possessions. And I think you're absolutely right. You you do. You you make it more about who you are and what you can offer to other people than about what you have and what people can offer to you. So let's go down the five signs real quick and just see if you exhibit any of these just as a interesting mental exercise. So the uh, being told no, they can't handle being told no. Is that something that bothers you? Is that something that you have difficulty accepting? Not really, for the most part. Um, yeah, I can kind of feel a bit upset if, like, I'm being told no, but it's not like I'll, like, break out screaming at you guys. I'll be like, oh, all right, and then I'll kind of just walk away from it. Right. How about sincere gratitude? Are you actually grateful when people do something for you or give you something like, like, for instance, uh, GMA is a great example of this. GMA made the, the big blanket for you, and she spent hours and hours putting this thing together and doing the pattern and all that stuff. How did that make you feel? Honestly, I loved it. I love the fact that she put so much time into it. And honestly, it makes it so much better when I sleep with it because I know that it was made with care. And honestly, I really love the design of it as well. Yeah, it's almost like when you sleep with it that, you know, Gma's giving you a hug every time you, you curl up with it, you know? Yeah. So a long list of never-ending demands. How demanding do you think you are? Um, not really. You're not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, the few times I actually, like, would want something, I, like, it takes me a, f it takes me a while to, like, come up, and, like, I'm normally, like, very quiet about it, like, Hey, Daddy. Um, so I was thinking about something. Right, and like, like when you want to get a new add-on for The Sims, one of one of your your passions, and you're paying for it, which is the the ultimate irony here. You're paying for it yourself with your own money that you earn. I just have to buy it for you because you don't have purchase rights on your account. You come to me and you're all shy. And my response is, what's the ask? What do you want? Just tell me what you want. And you're like, oh, well, I want to buy this. All right, here, it's done. Have fun. So, no, you're not demanding at all. Yeah. You, don't, you don't demand, you know, to go shopping. You don't demand clothes. You don't demand any of the things that, you know, when, when you were born and I knew I was having a daughter – I was terrified because I didn't know if I'd be able to relate to a daughter. And I heard all horror stories from my friends who had girls about, oh, when they get to this age, they're going to always want to go shopping. They're going to want this. They're going to want that. And I got none of that from you. And it was almost like, were they just trying to scare me or are you just that different? And it's like, yeah, she's, she's pretty easy to get along with at this point, <laughs> you know? So you've never had that problem. How about a no-can-do attitude? If we ask you to do something, do you resist that? Do you say no, not my job, don't bother me, anything like that? Not really. Um, unless, you know, I'm in a bad mood, which never normally am unless, you know, it's an actual physical thing or something happened. Um, so I definitely, no I normally um, always do what you guys ask me unless I forget. <laughs> Yes, and and given the given the fact that you're my daughter, and I ask you to do something, and you don't do it, I <coughs> I totally understand why you don't do it because you are my daughter. Because I forget. What about comparing? Do you compare a lot? I normally like to try not to. Um, I never like. I've never really been all that much into social media and stuff and i never like compare like oh uh these kids get this and uh i have to have this like the only time i've ever done that is like with school lunch but like <laughs> am i really going to complain about something that petty 
That's a very good point. And and no, I think for the most part, both Bobby and I would agree that you really are not the type of person to compare yourself to someone else. By, I, growing up, I had a friend that was like that. And I've said many times on this podcast that growing up, my parents did not have a lot of money. We struggled to put food on the table and a roof over our head. So I never really got toys. You know, I never got gifts that were not associated with a birthday party, uh, my birthday or, or Christmas. So it was kind of a very bare bones type of thing. But it's funny because when I would get something for my birthday, it was huge to me. You know, I was incredibly grateful for it because I knew how difficult it was for my parents to provide. And I had this one friend of mine that every time I would get something decent that he liked for my birthday, he'd be the disentitled kid. He'd go out, he'd bug his parents and make his parents go out and buy it for him. And he would either get the same thing or he would get one better than me just so that he had something better. And I never really understood what that drive was. Um, and I think it was because coming from the position that I was in, it was never an option for me. Like the fact that I got what I got in the first place was a huge thing for me. The fact that I want something better than somebody else just never really, it, it never computed with me. Like I never really understood it. And I still don't even, even after doing this research, but I've run into that type of thing in the past where he would compare himself to me, which I thought was hilarious because we were paupers compared to him and his parents. And I'm like, why would you compare yourself to, to me, like, I don't, I don't, the, the funny thing was, like, with the exception of my dad, I had the relationship that I had with my mom was fantastic. And his parents almost bought him stuff so they didn't have to deal with him. Mm. And I think he was almost jealous of how close I was to my mom because he never had that with either of his parents. I don't know. And it's speculation, you know, 30, 40 years ago, speculation. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what uh, what we have for our suggestions on how to fix it. But we're going to give you three tools. We're going to take another quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to give you three tools to help battle entitlement. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking teens and entitlement. And now we're going to be talking about three tools for battling entitlement. <clears throat> it seems like entitlement is all around us, especially among teenagers. You can't be complacent if you want your teen to break free from entitlement. It requires effort and intention. So the first uh, tip we have here is teach your teen gratitude. The number one enemy of entitlement is gratitude. Gratitude isn't just being thankful or appreciative, but also recognizing the effort of the giver. Explicitly teaching your self-focused teen how to be grateful will help them develop gratitude more quickly and fully. Identify a gift when it comes. This means being able to tell the difference between what's owed, what's earned, and what's given as an act of kindness. If you didn't earn it and no one owes you, it's a gift. Appreciate what you have. This means considering the worth and value of what is given. 
recognize the kindness of the giver. Someone had to work and pay and be thoughtful of the recipient when give when given the gift. See, the other interesting thing about teaching your teen gratitude is not only does it help them to get out of this entitlement attitude, but it also makes the things that they get worth more to them. Like if you weren't, if you didn't have gratitude for the gifts that you got, the blanket that G-Mom made for you would just be another article of, of linen that was in the house. It would have no intrinsic meaning to you. It wouldn't have any sentimental value to you. It would just, it would just be a blanket like any other blanket. But because of the gratitude that you have and the appreciation that you have, it makes that item all the more valuable to you. So the individual who has gratitude for what they receive increases the benefit of the things that, that they receive as well, which is, which is another interesting take on it. The next thing that we have, and we've already kind of touched on it, and that is the fight comparison. They say that talk, they talk specifically about social media. So they say set time limits and ditch social media altogether. Help your teens interpret what they're seeing in the media and online. Remind them that all things are meant to sell, even their friend on social media selling something, such as, I've got it all together, or you should admire me. These are all half stories at best, but most are outright lies. Never compare your teen to others yourself. Conversely, do remind your teen that their value is in who they are and not in what they have or how they compare to someone else. And again, this is another one that has multiple benefits to it. If you're as valuable as you feel yourself, then it doesn't matter what personal possessions you have. Yeah. And personal possessions come and go. You know, if this week you're valuable because you have the expensive designer jeans. Well, what happens next year when those jeans are out of style and they're sitting in a drawer somewhere? Do you not feel worthy anymore because you're not wearing those jeans? Like that tying your self-worth to that type of thing is kind of, kind of silly. Yeah, and it's pretty much a downward spiral from there. Right, and it's it becomes almost impossible to feel feed that appetite for belonging and, and self-worth when you're attaching it to a materialistic type of thing. Mm -hmm. If you make yourself a better person, if you're compassionate, if you're empathetic, if you help people, like that's one of the reasons why I enjoy the kind of work that I do you know, I work in, in IT. I have, my job is to help other people. It's to solve problems, whether it's a, a problem somebody's having with their computer or whether it's a problem that the company's having that needs to be solved. The ability to solve problems for other people is self-fulfilling for me. And it allows me to do that outside of work. And yeah. you know, I tell a lot of people, I'm very fortunate that my profession happens to also be my hobby. But anybody, you know, first responders, doctors, nurses, uh, police officers, people that are out there protecting people and saving lives, you couldn't, there's no item that you could have in the world that would make you more, feel more valuable than to, to do something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So when somebody commits themselves to being a better person and making the world a better place, even... Even in a little bit, you know, like, no, I'm not going to go out there and solve world hunger or create world peace or anything like that. Yeah. You, you know, I've got some perspective on life. I'm not expecting to save the world, but if I make a person smile today, cause I, I crack a joke that makes them laugh, you know, or I see a coworker happens to be troubled or down and, and I just give them a, a shoulder to lean on or an ear to, to listen to what their issues are and I make them feel better, then I made my little part of the world a little bit better today. Mm -hmm. And I think that that means more in the grand scheme of things than having that designer shoe or that new handbag or whatever it is that people tend to attach value to. Making people feel better, making the world better, 
makes you more valuable to the world. Mm -hmm. And when you feel more valuable to the world, you feel more valuable to yourself. What's something that you do that makes you feel better about yourself and makes you feel more valuable? Um, let's see. I guess the thing that prob I'd probably say that I feel makes me um, valuable is kind of this podcast. Um, I'm a real teen experiencing real issues that teens face, and talking about it on, all, on the podcast I know has been helping people. People have really looked at this podcast and have really benefited from it. And not only was it to help me get through my own issues and talk it out with you, but it was also in order to help others. And so far, I think that's probably one of my most valuable attributes. And I think I would agree. I think we've gotten feedback already. I've chatted with people uh, on some of our rebroadcast feeds, and they told me how valuable this this podcast has been to them but i'm going to give you another example that's that's immediate in my mind and that was yesterday so yesterday i came home from work and i i was agitated and i was kind of angry and worked up and and i was recounting what happened at work yesterday and you saw how upset i was and what did you do do you know what you did Patted you on the shoulder. Yeah, you just came over and just that simple gesture of, Dad, it's okay. You're home now. It's okay. Immediately had a calming effect. And, like, that meant a lot to me. It meant a lot that you cared how I felt. And it meant a lot that you, you wanted to ease that burden. And you didn't have a good day at school. You know, you kind of were dealing with your own problems. And it was one of those, you know what, I can help here. I can do something. I can, I can relieve that burden. And it did. And when you can have that effect on other people with a simple gesture of just coming over and, and patting somebody on the shoulder and letting them know it's, you know, it's okay. You know, you're home now. Everything's all right. Don't worry about it. Doing that makes you a better person. You made your corner of the world a little bit better yesterday by doing that. And that means a lot. What else did we have? Um, the last tip we have is empower them to get things for themselves. Does your teen struggle with understanding that getting things requires effort? Let them work for it and find out for themselves. Entitlement can be a tough attitude to turn around. Until their brains develop more fully, expect to continue to battle entitlement. Nevertheless, try to be patient with your teenager. It's also important that you should be patient with yourself. Entitlement, entitlement can be hard to stomach in and of itself, and it takes effort to steer that ship in the right direction. You're bound to make mistakes as you navigate how to deal with an entitled teen. If you make mistakes, try fixing them, but keep working on it. It's worth the effort. And I think I can honestly say that Mommy and I kind of have steer the ship pretty well with you. I think we don't have an entitlement issue with you. What, what's your overall conclusion of your entitlement level, given all we've talked about today? Honestly, pretty low. Um, I'm very grateful for everything I've been given. I've never felt that I've been entirely owed something, and even when I kind of want to get something, I'm never really demanding of it. And I think the other important thing to note is we don't give you things. We give you opportunities. And it's up to you to choose whether or not you want to take advantage of those opportunities to obtain the things that you want. So there is no sense of entitlement that we get from you. You can either do your chores or not do your chores. There's no pressure either way. If you do them, there's a benefit. If you don't do them, there's no benefit. And there were weeks, you know, that you've not done them. You didn't feel good. We were too busy. You had too much stuff going on. And it's fine if you don't do them. But you also want to accept the fact that you don't get that benefit when you don't. Um, and because of that, mommy and daddy don't have any issue giving you things above and beyond because 
you do go above and beyond. We're, we don't ask a lot of you, but you give far more than we ask, I think. And because of that, you, I think you should be rewarded for it. And a lot of times you are. What happened, you know, you were at band practice over the weekend. What, ha- what did mommy and daddy do? You pretty much redesigned my room. Yeah, mommy went in there and she was cleaning it up. She was putting your clothes away. She swept up the floor. And we came up with the idea. We had shelves that we were going to put up for you. All right, let's put the shelves up. Let's redo the room here. Let's move because you have a whole lot of uh, uh, Lego models that you have. Let's put them up on the shelf. Let's clear some space off here. Let's give her a little little nicer working area here so it could be a little nice. It's little things like that. It didn't cost us a dime to do any of that. It wasn't it wasn't that we spent money on you. It was time and it was effort and it was love that we spent on you. And you were incredibly appreciative of it. And that's rewarding to us as well. You know, it wasn't just you got to benefit from them. I mean, daddy got the benefit to see that smile on your face, to see that reaction you had when you walked in your room. That's something that pays off in dividends for us. So not being entitled and trying to be a good person has its own benefits to it. And I think we all experienced that this week. So I think that was all we had. Uh, We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll get your closing thoughts. And we'll finish up the rest of the business of the podcast. Alrighty. We'll be right back. Go for your closing remarks. Alrighty. So if there is anyone out there that has to experience being around an entitled teen or, you know, just entitlement in general... Just know that it takes time to get over it. You can at least help your teen in order to help them learn the value of hard work and the value of gratitude. And simply having um, an unentitled nature and just being extremely grateful for everything has many benefits. And no matter what, it's always worth the effort no matter how much you have to put in. Okay, very well said. Sage advice and knowledge as always. Thank you. Before I do want to move on, I do want to acknowledge we're broadcasting live for the first time on our new Podbean account, and we do have one listener in the chat room now. I hope you can hear us. I don't know if it actually works. We did get a hello. Thank you for that. Uh, I assume that's going to confirm that we are actually being heard out there. This was kind of our first test of this one today. Before we do go, I do want to once again invite our audio and video um, audience out there to subscribe to the podcast. You can find us listed as Insights into Teens for our audio version or Insights into Things for our video version of the podcast. We're listed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Stitcher, iHeartRadio, any place you can find a podcast. I would also invite you to give us your feedback. We're always looking for suggestions for uh, show topics. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're also on Twitter at insights into things. You can send us actually DMs on Twitter. We do accept them. You can get high res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can get audio versions of this podcast on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. Video versions you can get now at podcast.insightsintothings, which is, again, another benefit from our hosting on uh, Podbean. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast or on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights in. Let's slow down there. Instagram.com slash insights into things, or you can find us on the web at insights into things.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. And that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.